Grade 5 Math, Topic 15, Lesson 2. For additional resources, log on to ClassLink, go to Envision, and pull up Topic 15, and you'll see the lessons that correspond to these examples. How can you identify relationships between patterns? So today, we're going to continue with numerical patterns, but our tables are going to be set up a little bit differently. Let's look at the first problem. Jack is training for a race. Each week, he runs 30 miles and bikes 120 miles. He created a table to record his progress. How many total miles will he run and bike after five weeks? Can you identify any relationship between the miles run and the miles biked? Okay, so let's see what our girl says over here. You can use the rules add 30 and add 120 to help you complete the table. Let's look at the table. Since Jack runs 30 miles each week, add 30 to find the next term for the total miles run. Add 120 to find each term in the pattern for the total number of miles biked. Okay, so let's look down here. Something else different from yesterday. When we had our rules yesterday, we applied them both to each of the columns the same. Today is going to be different. We have a rule for miles run that says add 30. We have a rule for miles bike that says add 120. So we need to make sure we're adding the correct amount to the right category. So for total miles run, I start with 30 because that's what he did week one, and now he's going to run 30 miles each, addi each additional week. So plus 30, plus 30, plus 30, plus 30, all the way down for the five weeks. The same thing holds true with the total miles biked. I'm going to add 120 e to each week to get the following week's amount. Let's look at C. Compare the corresponding terms in the patterns. 30 times 4 is 120, 60 times 4 is 240, 90 times 4 is 360, 120 times 4 is 480, 150 times 4 is 600. So the total number of miles biked is always four times the total number of miles run. Well, how did they get four? So we need to look at the relationship between the miles run and the miles biked. So when we have 30 miles run, there's 120 miles biked. What they're asking you to do is find the relationship between these two numbers. So they're saying if you take 30 and you multiply by 4, you get 120. Well, what if you didn't know that or you didn't see that right off the bat? You can take the total number of miles biked, 120, and divide that by 30 to see the relationship. So... Looking at 30, does 30 go into 1? No. Does 30 go into 12? No. Does 30 go into 120? Yes. So we have to count by 30s to see how many times. So I have 30, 60, 90, 120. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Four times. That's how they're getting the relationship of 4. And you see that true for the entire table. So 30 times 4 is 120. 120 divided by 4 equals 30. And we could do the same thing with the reverse of the 60. 240 divided by 4 equals 60, and so on down the table. Convince me. Do you think the relationship between the corresponding terms in the table Jack created will always be true? Well, the answer for this is yes, because we're always going to be adding 30 and adding 120 to each week, so the relationship is always going to be multiplying by 4 when you do the miles run to get the miles biked. And the exact opposite, if we wanted the miles run, we would do miles biked divided by 4 equals the miles ran. And you could see that with the work that we did over here. So the relationship is... He bikes four times as much as he runs, and he only does one-fourth of the running that he does biking. So remember, division can be represented as a fraction. Greetings, mathematicians. Hungry for some worked examples? I know I am. So welcome back. This is Topic 14, Lesson 2. Today we're going to be looking at following numerical patterns again, this time our tables are gonna be a little different than yesterday. So I have gallons, quarts, and pints here. Yesterday for both items, what, whatever table it was, we were following the same rule. So if you remember our rosemary and our sage plant, our rule yesterday was adding one and a half inches to both plants. 
That's not going to be the case today. We're given two different rules. So for quarts, my rule is going to be add four, but for pints, my rule is going to be add eight. Something else that's different in the table today is there are no starting values. When there are no starting values, you have to look to the rule to see what amount is going to start there. So I'm just gonna pick quarts to start with. My rule is going to be add four. So I'm gonna put four in my top box to start off my counting for my rule. So this is just simply adding four each time going down or counting by fours. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So to read this table, when we just look at gallons and quarts, I see, for example, three gallons is 12 quarts. Now I have pints. Pints I'm not adding four because my rule is different. I'm actually adding eight. So I'm counting by eights in the pints column. So I start off with eight because that's my rule. So I have eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48, because I'm counting by eights. So if I were to read this table now, I know gallons, there's three gallons, which is 24 pints, but I can read completely across. Gallons, three, three gallons are 12 quarts and 24 pints. So now we need to do some calculations because there's a question that you have to solve that asks for, well, how many pints and quarts are in 12 gallons? So I don't have 12 gallons on my table. I only go up to six. So just like we talked yesterday, you don't have to continue the table on. Could you all the way down to 12? You absolutely could and just keep counting by uh, your fours and your quarts and your uh, eights in your pints. So let's talk about if we had 12 gallons. So there's 12 gallons. I need to know if four quarts equals one gallon, how many quarts are in 12 gallons? So you simply will do 12 times four for your quarts. So 12 gallons times four quarts per gallon is going to be 48 quarts in 12 gallons. Now that's not the same for pints because pints, there's eight pints in one gallon. So I have 12 gallons again times how many pints per one gallon? Eight, so 12 times eight equals, so remember we're in fifth grade, we can solve this. If you don't have your 12 times tables memorized, that's okay. We can do the math here together. So I have 12 times eight. Eight times two is 16, regroup my one. Eight times one is eight, plus one is 96. So that's 96 pints in 12 gallons. So two options here to solve the problem, since it was asking for 12 gallons, you could continue your table on, counting by your fours and your quarts, and your eights and your pints to get 48 quarts and 96 pints, or you could do what we did here, was take our 12 gallons, and we knew one gallon is four quarts, so 12 times four is 48 quarts, and when we did our pints, we knew one gallon was eight pints, so we did 12 times eight, which is our 96 pints in 12 gallons. Keep up the great work. Mike and Sarah are packing boxes at a factory. Mike packs 30 boxes each hour. Sarah packs 15 boxes each hour. How many boxes will each person have packed after an eight hour shift? So I'm gonna create a table. So I have hours in the shifts they wanna know, and they wanna know up to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have Mike packing and Sarah packing. So we have Mike packs 30 boxes each hour and Sarah's doing 15 boxes each hour. So those are going to be our rules. So we're going to add 30 each hour for Mike and we're going to add 15 each hour for Sarah. So hour one, starting with our rule, 
In one hour, Mike packs 30 boxes. And in one hour, Sarah packs 15 boxes. So I would count by 30 all the way down the table for Mike's amount, and I would count by 15, adding 15 each time for Sarah's amount. But because you're in fifth grade, we can take a shortcut with multiplication. So we need an eight hour shift. So in one hour, Mike does 30 boxes. So I'm gonna take eight hours times 30 boxes, and I'm gonna get Mike's amount. So let's see what that is. So 30 times eight. Eight times zero is zero, eight times three is 24. That's 240 boxes for Mike. Let's look at Sarah. So Sarah is doing one hour, 15 boxes. So eight hours times 15 boxes equals, so eight, well, 15, we'll line it up correctly, 15 times eight, eight times five is 40, regroup my four, eight times one is eight, plus four is 12, so 120. So 120 boxes for Sarah. I'm gonna put a little S up here, and I'm gonna put an M here for Mike. So let's look at our answer choices. So Mike box is 38 boxes, no, Mike box 240, that's gone. Mike box is 86 boxes. No, Mike box 240. That's gone. Mike box is 120 boxes. Oh, didn't I get 120? Oh yeah, 120 is here. But be careful who boxed 120 boxes. Sarah did. This is another distractor. So be careful that you keep in order, whether you color code like me or you line it up a certain way to keep the numbers attached to the correct person or category. So 120 belongs to Sarah, not Mike. So let's look at D. Mike, 240 boxes, yes. Sarah, 120 boxes, yes. So D is the correct answer.